speak to you today about ways and means of improving pedestrian movement in cities. But first of all, I must confess, I'm a traffic engineer. Um, and uh, in my older times, I certainly installed several hundred million kilometers of pedestrian guardrail, lots of new traffic lights, and probably diverted pedestrians out of their um, direct desire lines many times. But things have changed. Um, at Transport for London, I was uh, chief engineer uh, for urban traffic control network operations. My job was to keep London moving. Um, I was also responsible for vetting new highway schemes under a new government uh, regime that we introduced, and also in the day-to-day -day operation of the uh, London road network. I'm going to talk first about essential elements for success in um, any new highway scheme. Um, and then briefly about a few of the high-profile schemes I worked on in London. Um, and then I'm going to give some technical details of how the new methods we evolved, um, we developed, how we did them, and how they are as appropriate to Hong Kong as they were and are in London. Uh, the constant theme of my presentation is the reallocation of road space to pedestrians and a move away from the dominance of road traffic in the urban environment. Um, also, a shift away from huge one-way systems to traditional urban streets um, with uncluttered footways. I also show how this can be achieved without increasing traffic congestion. The ingredients for a successful urban improvement scheme are many and various but a driving force is necessary. A driving force that can overcome vested interests and make stakeholders see what is in it for them. Re-election comes high on the uh, priority list for politicians, profit for landowners, uh, developers and business, and a more pleasant environment for road users and for professionals like us, the pleasure of seeing a job well done from conception to completion. Not least, of the influences in the UK has been an act of parliament, uh, the Traffic Management Act of 2004, which imposed a network management duty on all highway operators, and very specifically defines traffic as including pedestrians. The act requires highway oper operators to ensure that their networks operate in the best interests of all road users. Um, and moreover, to prove that they are doing so. In this framework, all schemes are, are vetted rigorously to ensure that the benefits are shared and not focused on single uh, interest groups. This required us to engage in um, new thinking about how we handled highway schemes, and specifically about how we provided for pedestrians. Um, and a new governance framework has evolved to deal with this. But appearing on the screen are other issues that also are important, engineering excellence, design excellence, and accountability. Oxford Circus is at the hub of two of the world's great shopping streets. Um, it was intensely overcrowded. The problem here was to uh, reduce pedestrian overcrowding without compromising traffic capacity or safety. The design, which was by my colleagues at Atkins, um, is based on the famous Shibuya crossing in Tokyo. Uh, my job was to guide it through the new approvals process and asking the awkward questions, uh, which I did. Um, the scheme reduced pedestrian congestion by about 50%, simply by uh, wider footways, removing guardrails. Um, it was neutral on traffic capacity. Um, Footway space considerably good. High quality design and materials were used as befits the, the John Nash architecture of the circus. Piccadilly, um, in 2009, I and my boss, uh, Peter Brown, were asked by the then Deputy Chairman of Transport for London, Daniel Moylan, to consider reverting the huge one way system of Piccadilly, uh, Pall Mall, St. James' Street um, from one way to two way operation turn what was a racetrack 
into a civilized urban street. I uh, did some uh, calculations early on, I should say. We did some extensive modeling later, but early on I did some calculations more or less on the back of a cigarette packet and said, uh, yes, it will work. And it has opened recently and it does work. Uh, the design principles are similar to those of Oxford Circus, uncluttered and simple. Um, here is a photograph that I took myself last summer in uh, Pall Mall. Uh, you can note a couple of aspects. Note the shared lighting column and traffic signal um, at the right. Also note the complete lack of pedestrian guardrail. Um, you may also note the complete lack of pedestrians and traffic. Um, but I but I took this photograph early on a Sunday morning last summer uh, after a, a red-eye arrival from Hong Kong. Um, going even further than the, the previous two schemes, um, Exhibition Road in West London is a true shared space scheme. Uh, it's one of the largest done in the UK to date. Uh, my role was to ensure that the movement of people and goods People, engineers, planners, often forget about the movement of goods uh, around cities, which is actually essential for the city to work. Um, it's, it's as important as road traffic and pedestrians, but all together in the mix. Um, my job is to make sure that that was not compromised. Uh, so these three prestige schemes, um, all in all costing about 500 million Hong Kong, uh, were improved for the benefit chiefly of pedestrians, however. However, at the same time, there was political pressure to smooth traffic flow um, on London's roads, uh, where there was little or no money available for these huge prestige schemes. Uh, we were, in effect, being asked to improve both road traffic and pedestrian conditions at the same time by this gentleman, the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson. Um, I'm a traffic signal engineer, first and foremost, and in all of these schemes, traffic signaling um, was a key element. Um, they, con they control road traffic capacity, as well as providing safe opportunities to cross busy roads. Uh, in London, there are 6,000 traffic signals. Um, the mayor also wanted us, in addition to looking at all of these new schemes, to review the operation of each of these traffic signals at a rate of 1,000 a year, um, and use them to both smooth traffic flow and improve walkability which is a tough call. Uh, we had to do a good deal of thinking about how to deliver this, um, and we came under unprecedented press and public scrutiny while the new strategy was being evolved and embedded into the business. What came out of it was a new methodology for setting traffic signal timings, as well as proposals for developing new technology that could be used on traffic signals. Um, and as well as rolling out well-recognized existing technology across the network. Um, the new method was tested by the three schemes I just mentioned in Anya. Squaring the circle, uh, dealing with road traffic and pedestrians at the same time. Um, and best to keep the two apart, which has often been the answer in Hong Kong. Conventionally, traffic engineers tell anyone who asks for more and better pedestrian facilities. I'm talking about at grade here. Oh, we can't do that. It would increase congestion and it would increase pollution. Well, that is what it says in the traffic engineer's handbook. Um, and often, it is true. Traffic flows according to mathematical rules. Um, it's like fluid mechanics with a bit of human behavior added to make things a little bit more exciting um, for the uh, engineer who likes things to plan out exactly as he wants. But even without expensive uh, shared space schemes, it is possible to make life better for all road users and to demonstrate it mathematically. Above all, this helps to assure that the road network is balanced uh, for all road users with and with regular review, say every three years, um, keeps any urban network running at peak efficiency. Efficiency is the outcome. Uh, and I know efficiency is very much valued in Hong Kong. A little engineering judgment is the main input. This is how we did it. 
This is well-trodden ground for traffic engineers. Uh, we all know that for stable network, we need to uh, set our traffic signals so that we operate at, and preferably under 90% of saturation. The ideal target is 80%. This provides sufficient resilience to cope with most run-of-the-mill incidents, slow starts, hesitant drivers, um, people uh, texting while they're on the right behind the wheel, that sort of thing. Um, it also speeds up the clear up of incidents, very common on the network. Um, and combined with a traffic responsive system such as Scoot, which is used in Hong Kong, um, is, provides a means of dealing very effectively with day-to-day -day fluctuations, hour-to-hour, minute-to-minute fluctuations in traffic demand. Aside from these fixed aspects, all of which are important, but much less flexible than signal timings, the main tool at the traffic engineer's disposal is, is the traffic signal cycle time. Therefore, the first rule that we set was to operate traffic signals at the lowest cycle time compatible with achieving a maximum degree of saturation of 90%. Now, this is important because when it goes above 90%, the traffic starts to queue back. Now, when it queues back, it is queuing back through upstream junctions and pedestrian crossings. That's when you get the tailpipe exposure upstream. So, traffic, controlling traffic congestion effectively is, is important to providing good pedestrian facilities. If you want to keep, uh, my first slide showed people crossing between a traffic queue on Queen's Road Central. Uh, they're, they're crossing within half a meter of the tailpipe. That is not an effective way to manage a network. Um, so the, 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 the signal cycle time is the main tool. We set a maximum limit of 120 seconds, which the Oxford Circus scheme I showed you earlier operates at. That is towards the high end. We would we never recommend going above that because it has very little benefit. But there are other factors than road traffic to be taken into account when designing the traffic signals. The most important of which is pedestrians. So, um, we set the performance standards for uh, pedestrians at traffic signals the same as we did for uh, road traffic. And here are the two side by side almost. So traffic performance is a traffic light score, red, amber, green. Um, green is ideal, but practically amber, sort of 80 to 90% of saturation is what is achievable. Above that, you have a problem, you have persistent congestion. And then we set the same balanced scorecard approach for pedestrians. And I'll spend a little bit more time on this because it's, clear, it, it, it's important to be clear what I mean. So undersaturated for, for pedestrians. All pedestrians waiting to cross the road clear the curb during the green man, cross the, the invitation to cross signal. Um, amber, or at saturation, all pedestrians uh, waiting to cross just clear the curb during the green man, and no pedestrian overcrowding. That means overcrowding on traffic islands or on the footways. And oversaturated, that is on occasions where Pedestrians who are passing by, say at the back of the footway, can't get through because of the pedestrians waiting um, to cross the road. Now, um, the lower the signal cycle time, the more times per hour a pedestrian gets to cross the road. So, you, so uh, quite often the case is here to lower the pedestrian, the signal cycle time, gives uh, more opportunity to cross and thus reduces pedestrian overcrowding. Um, I'll give an example. This junction in uh, Central is red for both uh, road traffic and for pedestrians. This is the junction of Queen's Road Central at the junction of Wyndham Street and Pedder Street. Uh, this is lunchtime. Uh, the traffic is queued out of sight. It's actually queued over several pedestrian crossings, um, almost back to Admiralty. Uh, and pedestrians waiting to cross on the narrow footway block the movement of people along the footway. You can see here, people are trying to squeeze past while people are waiting to cross the road. Uh, there's a very simple solution to this. Um, using traffic signal timings alone. Um, one is to reduce the signal cycle time. 
The other one is to relocate the traffic queue. Now, frequently at this time, and actually you can see it here, traffic is queued across the pedestrian crossing. So you've got two problems there. You're exposing um, pedestrians to vehicles which are not quite sure. They're in the middle of the junction. They're violating the box junction, they yes, I know. But um, the, the problem here is easily solved, reducing the signal cycle time and relocating the traffic queue upstream. Um, here, there's also a little bit of downstream congestion, which could easily be solved by a little bit of attention um, downstream. But the toolbox of the traffic engineer is still not there, even after these very simple measures um, have been done. The, the solutions range between medium and low tech, and have been tried in London successfully. One has already been mentioned, uh, pedestrian clampdown. Um, I was um, privileged to be on the development team for this uh, in London. This is the first one that we rolled out in front of our headquarters building. Um, it's been widely installed across Asia uh, and in the US, um, and now it's growing in, in London considerably. It gives pedestrians a feeling of protection as they're crossing the road. Um, it also reduces confusion, especially uh, because different cities, different countries operate traffic signals in different ways. This gives a, fe a, a feeling of security. Once you, once you cross the set the road, you know you've got 20 seconds left to cross, or whatever it is, to finish your crossing before the traffic will start. In London, we did some uh, extensive surveys on this, um, uh, and public approval was 83%, so they liked it. Um, and it was not expensive either, so they liked it even more. Um, there are also more sophisticated traffic management techniques, such as optimizing signals to progress pedestrians through multiple crossings uh, with a minimum of delay. So that you don't, when you, if you're crossing a wide road, you cross one crossing, you wait half a minute, cross another one, you wait 60 seconds, and you cross the final bit. You can avoid that. Um, the scooter urban traffic control system, which is used in Hong Kong, is very good at that. Um, and can be helped to make streets more friendly. Uh, low tech solutions are uh, Forrester signposts there. This is in Kennedy Town. Um, quit confining pedestrians with unnecessary guardrail, particularly at junctions, where research in the UK by the University of Southampton has established that taking all guardrail away at junctions has no impact on pedestrian safety whatsoever. Um, it also means that they're not confined to a very narrow crossing point. Um, put uh, street signs, road signs, and traffic signals on the same column along with uh, lighting columns. Very simple answer. Um, a lot of engineers might say, oh, no, you can't do that. How, how do we know the, the guy's working on a traffic signal? How does he know what, how much current it is? Well, these days, that's easily resolved. That's, that's no longer an excuse. Um, Cable, cables can be labeled, separate cutouts can be supplied. Um, going back to the UK Traffic Management Act I mentioned earlier, the Act imposes a duty on all those operating and working on the highway to cooperate um, so that the, the different agencies who are putting up different signs, traffic signals, street lighting, tram columns, whatever, are obliged to cooperate, um, which is, which is good, which is good. And actually, it reduces that sort of overcrowding that you might see there. I want to finish with um, my favorite two bits of guard railing in, uh, that I spotted in Hong Kong, uh, the one on the left in, in Wellington Street. You would certainly not get a wheelchair through there. The, the very slim lady going through there is having to do this to, to get through. Now, that is, well, that's ridiculous. Um, and the one on the right shows a very small piece of uh, guard railing in Kennedy Town which can serve no useful purpose whatsoever. Thank you for your time. Oh, yeah.